Welcome to this uh, Teams IT Pro Academy session, Media and Microsoft Teams, why meetings are simple. My name is Martin Rinas. I'm a senior program manager in the product group with Microsoft. Before we go into the content, let's do a little bit of housekeeping. You'll find this deck and the PowerPoint um, on AKMS slash Teams Academy. If you would like to provide feedback on, on this session, please go to AKMS slash Teams Community and add the IT Pro training tag so that we can follow your, your feedback. For feedback about Teams features we're talking about in the session, please go to AKMS slash Teams feedback and either vote on, on existing feedback items or create a new one. Teams in Office 365 evolve constantly. So um, it might be that the service that you're receiving already has improvements that are not shown in this recording. Please always go back to AKMS slash Teams blog to learn <clears throat> about the latest content here. At the end of this session, you will have learned two things. First, meetings aren't complex anymore. They simply work. And there's really not much preparation you would need to do. If you want to opti further optimize for media connectivity and, and for best user experience, it's as simple as optimizing for three IP submits and for UDP ports. Please be aware that Exchange Online, SharePoint Online and Wonderful Business follow the same concepts here with their own set of endpoints you can optimize for. This session particularly is, is around Teams and what you can do here. When I was preparing for this session, I found this picture of this young lady wearing a rocket on, on her back. And I thought that's a, 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 nice, a nice visual for, for the session here. Why, why is that? Well, um, because meetings are simple. Meetings aren't rocket science anymore. Meetings just work. All you need to join a Teams meeting is a link. You can invite your customers, your partners, your employees. Everybody can, can be invited into, into a Teams meeting and all they need to join the meeting is the link. There is no account required. You know, they can download the client, but they can also just join through a modern web browser. There's really not, not, not much more. Obviously, um, there is a lot of rocket science when, when it comes to meetings, but the rocket science is is, is not on, um, on you as a customer or, or as a partner, but the rocket science is on us. Um, and we've listened to all the feedback that we've captured from uh, talking to customers, executives, um, how we can, you know, improve experience experiences, um, and what you know what we can do in in our products uh, to to make your life life simpler and easier. Common feedback themes we have heard from people that are using all kinds of meeting solutions in the past is um, that you know in the end everybody is interested that, that meetings just work. Um, you need to be able to join quickly. You know, don't want to. Um, have have to wait and install plugins or client software or anything. You know, you are you are on a mission. You want to meet somebody. You want to talk about something, and you really just just want this want this thing to work. Um, typical issues we have heard is you know that that joining a meeting takes too long. You know, a couple of seconds, maybe even more, before you are connected into the meeting. It takes a while before audio and or video connects. You know, it may take a while before sharing is there. Um, we keep hearing that people are um, dissatisfied because they are dropping out of meetings. It's not reliable um, when you're on the go. Maybe you have to dial in over PSTN or regular uh, network, phone network to be able to be connected because you can't rely on IP connectivity. And all those things are, you know, um, is, um, is feedback that, that, that we heard loud and clear from our customers and from customers that are using different solutions. Um, and we embraced this feedback and, you know, um, put a lot of effort in the Teams media stack to make sure that we get down to this, it's simple, all you need is a link concept. And I think we, um, we made pretty, pretty good progress here and we have a pretty, pretty solid solution um, that, that helps you to achieve this. But then, you know, seeing is believing. I mean, we, I can, I can talk all day long about how great our product is and, and, you know, what are the cool things that we have done. But, you know, of course, everybody would, would do this. So, you know, let's, let's jump in and do a little bit, you know, a couple of demos here that I've prepared for you to see what the actual improvements are and how you can benefit from them. 
The first scenario is um, the, the echo chamber. You know, and you might be familiar with, with this uh, type of concept or with, with this scenario. Um, there's a meeting room like we see it here um, in, in, in the picture. Uh, people have started the meeting already from, from the you know, meeting console, from, from the meeting system in, in that room. Um, somebody else is, might, might be a little, little bit late. That person, you know, has his laptop with him, um, is entering the room and wants to join that meeting as well. Now, um, you know, the reason why he, he brought this laptop, maybe he has content that he wanted to share. Um, and now, you know, he's entering the room and is trying to um, trying to join that meeting. So I'm the person that wants to join that meeting. I stepped into the conference room with, with my laptop open. The reason why I bring my laptop with me is that I wanted to share content. And instead of plugging in cables in the room, um, I decided to join the meeting, you know, in the room as well as from my computer so that, so that I can easily do content sharing into the meeting from my computer. So um, what will happen is um, I will be hitting the join meeting button. I will be entering what we call the pre-join meeting screen. And what we see here is that uh, Teams detects that another conference room um, has already joined that meeting. And during the pre-join ex uh, experience, it will offer me to join with, with audio off uh, to proactively prevent the howling and feedback that we other my, uh, otherwise might experience. So I'm joining with, with audio off. You can see that the microphone toggle is now turned off and I can join the meeting without any howling. Now, that is great if, if I'm stepping in, in a big room that has uh, a Microsoft Teams room, rooms in there so that, that this system can be detected. But what about a scenario where I might be using a, a smaller focus room um, and, you know, where there's no, no, conference, uh, no conference room equipment, no uh, MTR deployed, but maybe just uh, USB devices that I can plug in into my own, um, into my own device. Um, we have built in howling detection and suppression and into teams as well. Let's see how that works. So again, I will be joining the meeting. Um, And I think we, we've all been in, been in the situation uh, where we, you know, all of a sudden get get this feedback loop, uh, this howling, and we need to, you know, everybody in the room is, is getting hectic and needs to figure out, okay, who's causing the echo? Do we need to turn off my microphone? Do we need to turn off the speaker? What what I need to do to to, to stop the, this howling and and you know this this noise? Um, what Teams will do is, you know, it it, it detects this and offers you uh, a user facing diagnostic at the top that we can see right now, which will then, you know, do the right things and turn off the audio so that you are relieved from, from this, you know, painful situation and continue with, with this meeting with all these. Another common scenario is um, that we have situations where um, network conditions aren't as optimal as, as we would like it to be. Um, the world is changing, people are more, more mobile, uh, specifically on, on the mobile network, we always can't rely on having, having enough bandwidth available. Um, so we made big investments here um, in improving the codex and you know, this change is in the process of being rolled out. Um, so the the setup here is that the in, in this slide in, in this demo we will have um, two sections of an audio um, of an audio sample. The first one is without the improvements um, under you know bandwidth constraint situation. So we're we're doing an audio stream over seven kbps, which is you know really not not a lot of bandwidth, 
which we might see if we're on a you know not so well connected mobile network um you know so, something like that um we'll see this you know the first section of of the audio is without the improvements and then the second uh, sum that we'll see here right after that is um, the same audio sample but using the improvements uh, under the same challenging net network conditions so let's see or well, let's hear um, how that works out the coffee stand is too high for the couch the coffee stand is too high for the couch the set of china hit the floor with a crash the set of china hit the floor with a crash the ship was torn apart on the sharp reef. The ship was torn apart on the sharp reef. So it, it it's uh, clearly obvious that yeah, there there's a big difference in, in audio quality and that we will be able uh, to deliver crystal clear audio in ultra low bandwidth conditions. So this really helps in scenarios where the connectivity isn't as good. And you know maybe we are we're we are on the go we are mobile, um, and this feature allows us to you know join Teams meetings, um, even on you know poor network conditions with, with ease, join through mobile through um, through VoIP, so that we don't have to do the fallback into PSTN. Another common scenario is, um, again. You know, for mobile scenarios, when I'm on, on a Wi-Fi, that we are having, you know, what we call uh, burst loss. Um, codecs in the past were able to keep, you know, keep up with with um, average packet loss. You know, uniform packet loss over uh, over some time, were able to to, to deal with that pretty well. Um, the challenge has always been uh, to deal with with burst packet loss. So if we're losing, uh, you know, a large amount of packets within a very short time frame. This has been been a challenge challenge in the past. Scenario here typically is um, maybe I'm roaming with with my device, um, you know, inside the building. I'm, you know, um, and the, my device is connecting from one wireless antenna to another wireless antenna. You know, could be Wi-Fi. Uh, the same applies if I'm um, on on a mobile phone and I'm connecting from from one mobile antenna to another, um, or any any other situation where all of a sudden uh, we are losing a lot of packets in, in a short time frame. Um, again, we have two audio samples here, and this should be pretty familiar to um, to, to, to you know a lot of you. Um, the first example again is you know. Um, 30% burst loss, a lot of lot of burst loss happening. Uh, experience that that what it was used to be, and then the second example is with, with improvements in the codec and, and an actual new codec, and other improvements um, to illustrate how we are able to to run you know deliver a, a re really good audio experience even under those challenging network conditions. Statistical mechanics is a place of entropy and law dynamics. Entropy always increases. Among other things, the second law allows to dismiss claims which will motion machines. Statistical mechanics is the birthplace of entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. Entropy always increases. Among other things, the second law allows one to dismiss any claims to perpetual motion machines. So I think this is a quite quite impressive demonstration because it really shows how we are able to deliver a really good audio quality even on, on a very challenging network condition. And that is something that that you know I've experienced myself quite a lot when I'm uh, on the go, joining a conference call from from my car while while driving somewhere. Um, you know, it's really really good to see how you know Teams is being able to keep me connected and deliver super audio quality. Um, and so I, I was able to listen in, into the conference calls while I was while I was on the go. Another common scenario is that we're seeing that um, the, the people we are, we are working with um, and the way how they behave are, are changing over time. So while we know and we would would love and and, and uh, recommend that everybody is using a certified headset to get the you know most optimal audio quality because of all the hardware improvements or and the hardware processing that, that is happening in, in certified audio devices with um, you know headsets certified headsets most of the time have you know multiple microphones to the background um, and ambient noise suppression and all of this is done in hardware we also have to realize that um, the the environment 
uh, is is changing, and people start uh, working a lot, you know, in settings like this in, in public spaces, and nobody of them um, is 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 using a, a, an audio device and a certified headset or anything like that, but they're all using computer computer audio mic and speakers, um, which is somewhat challenging because in those um, you know um, environments there is a lot lot of background noise a lot of ambient noise in, in open spaces coffee places etc um, and we can't rely on the hardware doing the back, you know the the background noise suppression because there is no hardware support to do this um, so um, we we invested in that that scenario and made sure that we are able to detect the, the background noise while we are not using a certified uh, audio device and uh, um, applying background noise uh, suppression in, in those scenarios. So again, setup is the same. The first example is um, how it used to be. And then the second example is with the new improvements turned on, um, how, how we're able to reduce the, the background noise here. <laughs> So there, there's a lot of things that we have done in 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 the service, in the team service, in the client, um, as well as in, in in the in the media stack, to um, to deliver all of those those capabilities that are in the process of being rolled out right now. Um, now the question is: Is there anything that our customers that you can do to to you know further optimize the quality? Yes, there are things you can do. Um, if you know, audio quality is super important. There are certain things that you actually can do to, to improve the, the audio quality even more. When I talk to customers, uh, sometimes I get feedback that, or the, or the impression that uh, people think that, you know, connecting to a service, to, to our service, Office 365 and Microsoft Teams, and, you know, at, at a network layer, it looks a little bit, little bit like this. Um, on the one side with the corporate network where you know uh, corporate environments have full control and full responsibility uh, over the connections and then they are connecting to the internet and using the internet to connect to the service and you know at the internet um, we have only you know limited control we can select the isp usually we might have a little bit higher bandwidth but you know we, we don't have you know end-to-end -end quality of service or a guaranteed delivery or anything like that, which we get from a managed network. But the reality is that this is not, not actually quite true when we're talking about Office 365 and, and Azure, um, because Microsoft, we, we did you know massive investments in, in our own network, which you can see here on the right side, the Microsoft network, the, the green um, arrow on, on the right side. Um, so with, with this network, um, we are under control what, what's happening inside here. And so we are only using the internet to connect to our service for a very short, uh, short amount. Then you would be entering our own network. And from there on, you know, we are under control. And we can make sure and we will ensure um, that there is no jitter or, or packet loss being added, um, that latency is only imposed by the speed of light and distance. And, you know, a, a, a couple of other things. Uh, that we can, uh, that we are doing here, to make sure that you get the, the best uh, best experience. Um, so let, let's talk about this for a little bit more and, and expand on, on on this concept. What we see here is, um, you know, an illustration, a uh, conceptual illustration on 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 the size of of the glo of, of our network. So it's really a global network. We have um, peerings in more than 190 locations with more than 2,700 ISPs. So this network is really a, a global network, very well connected. Um, not only that we have, you know, 45 uh, and, and more data centers, we also have, you know, more than 100 locations where uh, the Azure front door locations, we'll talk about this in, in, in a second as well. Um, if you want to learn more about this network, uh, here's the link, AKMS slash Microsoft dash network. Um, if you want to learn, learn about uh, more, learn more about this, you know, um, please go there and, and uh, read up on the network. One funny fact that I'd always like to share is um, just to illustrate the, 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 the scale of, of this network and why it's, you know, why I'm 
I personally have, you know, feel quite quite good good about this and the advantages that we bring to our customers. Um, quite a while ago, uh, we had to realize that the connectivity between Europe and North America and the subsea cables, that capacity there was was maybe not necessarily reaching the limit, but you know, capacity wasn't available to that extent. You know with the projected growth that we were expecting. Um, and there was no capacity available that, that we could um, that we could use. So what we ended up doing is uh, that we entered a, a joint venture with, uh, with, with Facebook um, and a global uh, telecommunications infrastructure company. Um, and together uh, we installed a subsea cable between Europe and North America, um, adding a total of 160 terabit Per second of, of capacity uh, to, to those uh, to those networks. So there's you know a lot that we we are doing here to make sure that we have you know the best possible uh, experience for for our for our customers. What's the advantage? Why is it important to um, leverage as much as possible from from our network? It's not just about because our network you know might be performing better than any uh, and then any other uh, than the network of everybody anybody else. That's not not really the point here. While you know it might or not, might not be true, that's really really not 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 the key thing here. It's more about the fact that entering our network allows us. Uh, to, to use certain scenarios and certain features and capabilities to make sure that we re reduce the, the, the latency um, as, as much as possible. Why is that important? Well, in a, in a software as a service world, um, latency is really the currency. You want to make sure that we keep the latency as short as possible. And the latency is, you know, is really about the end user and the connection point to the service. That is the latency that has a massive impact on the end user's experience of, of that service. It's not necessarily about where the data is, is located because um, data protection is, is super important to us. So if you have a, let's say a European tenant and you don't configure anything else uh, like Office 365 Multi-G, all your data is stored in, in Europe. It will only be stored there. That's, that's for sure. Nevertheless, there are certain components that we can deploy uh, on a global basis to make sure that we re reduce the latency between the user and the service endpoint. And this is what we call AFD, the Azure, Azure front door. So conceptually for Exchange, think of this um, as, as the cafe server, SharePoint Online, you know, maybe, you know, think of it conceptually as the, as the web server. And for Teams, we have components as well, which are called the transport relays and media processors, which are, you know, without going too deep into this one, which are the endpoints for your media connections. And um, what we can do here is we can bring those endpoints closer to the user within our network so that the um, latency between the, the user and the service is being reduced while the tenant's data is still um, in, in its home tenant location. But allowing this is, is, you know, really there. Using this concept allows us to reduce the latency and then have a great impact here. Um, and now I think it's important to, to understand what you can do um, to use this investments that we made to make sure that you get the, get the, uh, the, the most out of it. So let, let's talk about this. What you can do and what, what we um, recommend you to do is to detect Office 365 traffic. Specifically, we have the concept of, um, of endpoint categories here. Uh, detect traffic that is um, you know, um, most impactful to the end users. Um, and treat this differently than any other Office 365 or uh, traffic or a traffic to the uh, you know quote unquote random internet. Um, we would like we, we would recommend you to detect um, traffic to the Office 365 optimized category and break this out locally um, as local uh, to the user as as you know reasonably possible. Um, send this off to the internet so that you can leverage our global network and all, all the um, infrastructure that we put in place as, as quickly as possible, while all the other um, traffic to the internet, etc., you know, can be backhauled and put through your security stack for a very good reason, because there are threats on the internet you need to protect yourself from. So that's, that's perfectly fine. But we really want to make sure that you can optimize your network for the uh, trusted service of Office 365. Um, this is certainly important for your, your offices, but also consider um, 
you know, connections like your client VPNs um, and make sure that you apply the same optimizations here if you want to further improve um, the, the user experience here. Technologies like SD1, software defined networking, are great, great enablers here. And we have the required APIs um, you know, to allow you to do this in, in, a, um, in an easy way. So what can you do to optimize for teams in particular? It's as simple as this table shows here. Um, the optimized category for teams consists of three subnets and four UDP ports. All of these endpoints in the optimized category are very static. You should not expect a high rate of change at all. Our aim is to keep this category as static as possible. Usually, you know, it's safe to assume, it's safe to expect that you'll not see more than a single change uh, within a year for each service. We we'll also make sure to announce any change in this category um, with a notice ahead um, so that you can plan, uh, plan ahead of it um, if, if needed. If you want to optimize for really high quality Teams meeting experience, you'd also want you, you'd want to implement local internet breakouts for these service specific endpoints. As mentioned earlier, Exchange Online, Skype for Business, uh, SharePoint Online, and OneDrive for Business follow the same concepts, the same principles with their own set of optimized category endpoints. Like any other optimized category endpoints, these are service specific. So inside these IP address ranges, you will only ever see Skype Online and Teams endpoints. No other component or service will ever be found in these IP address ranges. So going back to this to this uh, picture, what we've just done is by implementing the local internet breakout is we've reduced uh, the amount of corporate network that is involved. Um, the amount of internet that is involved, you know, might or might not change, but in the end you can, you know, take more advantage of um, of the Microsoft network and, you know, all the improvement that we are doing in the service with bringing the service endpoints as close to our users as, as technically possible. So this is really the recommendation here. Implement local breakout for Office 365 traffic while all, all other traffic is still routed to your centralized security stack. So let's do a quick recap. What are the key concepts we just talked about? Teams meetings aren't complex. There's really not a lot of network engineering required prior to onboard and get this up and running. All the rocket science is really on us. We spend a lot of effort in optimizing the media stack and you know do, do a lot of um, things here to make sure that you get the be best possible meeting experience under all conditions you might might find yourself in. Um, if there is a need to optimize, it's really around the local internet breakout for these optimized category endpoints. So the small set of um, subnets and UDP ports you need to optimize for. Also, um, don't get yourself uh, by undergoing a complex network assessment. In most cases, this really shouldn't be required prior to onboarding um, one to our Teams meetings. Um, but it's more about you know incremental improvements and additional uh, assessments you want to do as you've started consuming it to identify uh, areas that need you know a little bit more of um, network updates or you know changes to further improve the experience here. Um, so it's really all about, you know, starting with Teams meetings today. It's literally as simple as receiving the invite to a Teams meeting, clicking on the join link, and you'll be connected. A couple of session resources here. Um, if you want to learn more about connectivity to Office 365, the principles, and do a deep dive into that one, I highly, highly recommend uh, this, this first link here, aka ms slash brk3000, which will bring you to a session held at the Ignite conference 2018. Um, a great session explaining all the concepts and um, office connectivity, the endpoints, um, strategies, how to, how to go about this in, in very great detail. So that's highly recommended. The, the second link, AKMS slash PNC, Principles of Network Connectivity, is essentially um, a write-up um, and, and the ongoing documentation from, from the session um, above that, that I mentioned above. So this is your go-to place if you want to read up on all those principles. Um, we have a couple of links here for, for Teams documentation if you want to learn more, more about how to prepare. Um, as well as the link to the Microsoft Network. And last but not least, um, AKMS slash 
0365 endpoints, which is your go-to place um, for the latest uh, information about endpoints uh, that you need to consider when connecting to a service um, in Office 365.